shut it down. We got a barstool idol beating from John Taffer. I'm getting eaten alive by fucking flies. And we're paying tribute to that old masturbation machine, the family computer. Coming up in this episode of the Savage Sack Tap. And it starts right now. You're listening to the Savage Sack Tap. It's not a podcast. It's not a half cast. It's just a quick shot to the balls to help you finish off the week. We're cutting through the bullshit, filling your Friday with rage fueled logic, and cracking a few jokes along the way. So grab a bag of frozen peas. There's a savage sack tap coming your way. Smooth, lascivious, salacious, outrageous. What do we do when we fall off the horse? We get back on. Ooh, boy. Talk about falling off the fucking horse. Uh, <laughs> got my ass handed to me at uh, Barstool Idol this week. What's up, guys? It's Mike. Welcome to the Savage Sack Tap. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining me after uh, I brought uh, a great shame and a dishonor upon my family and the uh, Marina Corps. Uh, Mr. Harikari, myself. Oh, holy shit! Did I take a fucking a day one beating during uh, Idol Week? If you're wondering what the fuck I'm talking about, uh, I pro- I promise you, do not go out of your way to look at it. It's fucking atrocious. I'll uh, I'll get there in a second. Um, Barstool Idol, obviously Barstool Sports, one of my favorite uh, websites and content providers. So I entered uh, entered a contest there. Um, I submitted some some content that I had. I'd made, you know, podcasts, some uh, videos and stuff, and the winner of this one week sort of gauntlet run was going to get uh, a contract and a free mattress, I think mean, a free Lisa mattress, that would have been pretty fucking sweet too, uh, but anyway, the, um, I had to go in for an audition, well, they, they took all the submissions, I guess, and then they brought, uh, brought about 30 people in for auditions, and then, um, they whittled that down to 16 who came in this week for Idol Week, and it's just a, it's a comp. It's you know a week of making a, a week of making content and and all sorts of shit. Yeah, that's the kind of things you would do if you were working at, at Barstool Sports, but all in sort of a reality show, kind of like framed as uh, if you'd watch like I don't know, I guess compared to whatever you want, like the the challenge or uh, but almost like a mishmash of multiple different. Uh, reality game show type uh, type shows. I don't know. I'm kind of fucking stuttering like an asshole here, but uh, we yeah we <coughs> <coughs> sorry <coughs> Jesus got uh got some got some phlegm in there. But anyway, yeah, the uh, audition went very well. Uh, did a real good job. And then uh, day one of Idol Week was, if you could imagine, the exact opposite of that. Um, that's how that went. Just from from the jump, a train wreck. Uh, I didn't bring my laptop. I brought my tablet in case I had to work on something. But about, I guess, six people didn't have laptops. Uh, technically, I was among them. So we got reamed for that um, early on. Although I... I will say that did lead to one of the fucking the probably the highlight of my day and what's going to go down is one of the highlights of my year and probably my life is getting John Taffer to call me a smart ass. I got to see if I can dig up the clip and share it on uh, Facebook or something. I don't I wasn't positive where it is. It was during a, a radio segment, but we were on uh, we were on the Barstool radio and John Taffer was in just fucking ripping people. So they brought us they brought us into the radio studio with Taffer, and I think they were going to, like, fire, they were going to can one of us right on the spot, uh, but it turned out to be more of, like, a mock execution type thing, I don't, I don't know if that was the, the original intent, like, if Taffer was like, hey, I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to cut one, that's, that's on you guys, but it, it wound up being, it wound up being Taffer beating up on the office manager, because I guess some people had emailed about the laptops, and he never got back to them, but there was a moment when Taffer asked if, if we would show up for a test in school without a pen, and I told him that if it was multiple choice, I'd bring a sharpened number two pencil, and he called me a fucking, he called me a smart ass or a wise ass, but that was great, it was the high point of my day, uh, because in a day filled with fucking low points, but what are you gonna do, uh, you know what, Here, here's, uh, here's the thing, I took, um, 
I took a show that I launched in my fucking bedroom with a $12 plug-in microphone and made it to the, you know, the final, um, what, 16, you know, dozen plus or so, got to compete for uh, a job in front of, uh, in front of a national audience, or an international, it's the internet, is international, international audience, um, and fell flat on my face, but, um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely proud of where I was able to, uh, to take the show, and, uh, now it's just, you know, got to gotta lick the wounds for a couple days here. I'm going to go get some beach time in, fucking kick back with a few brewskis, cook up some fish on the grill, and uh, I figured the, the best way, like uh, like uh, we learned from Zoolander, is just get back on the fucking horse, you know? Uh, people texting me, messaging me, like, hey, man, sorry sorry about the loss, sorry you're out there. So it's, it's all right, you know? I'm Obviously, I'm bigly disappointed uh, that I didn't get to move on, at least for, for a couple days. I thought I could have done... Uh, done a pretty decent job, but it just, uh, I could, I kind of felt it from early in the day, like, things weren't going well, it was, a, it was a team event, and we drafted teams, and from, from the jump, I'd say there was a weird chemistry on my team, where no one, you know, no one wanted to take charge, and then someone would suggest something, and instead of, like, just doing something and making, like, a fun piece of content, we would bicker, and our, uh, it, it it literally started from the beginning with with like the naming of teams. I wanted to uh, I suggested a few names for us. I wanted to call us o- O'Doyle because I thought it would just be fun and silly and fucking retarded if every time our team name was announced like Hey, where's O'Doyle? We could all raise our arms and just be like O'Doyle rules. And obviously that'd be cheesy as fuck. But I thought it would be fun, and cheesy. Uh, that one got shot down. And then I want <laughs> I suggested the Good News Twinks as a team name. Uh, instead of the bad news bears, obviously the good news twinks would be the inversion of that, and we didn't we didn't go with that one. So finally, they settled on Lazy Mike and the troops. I guess one of the guys thought it would be a good idea to take advantage of of my service in the Marine Corps. Chicky, everything all right? What's wrong, Chicky? My uh, my producer Chicken was crying a little bit. You all right, Chicky? All right, I'm I'm podcasting now. I will. I will pet you later. I have to hold my show prep with one hand and angle the microphone toward me with the other. So I can only pet you for a couple more seconds, buddy. All right, there you go. Good girl. <laughs> um, yeah, so we settled on Lazy Mike and the troops because of my lazy-ass right eye and, and my service uh, in the Marine Corps. I, w- I wasn't in love with that name, but I was I was willing to go with it. I, I came up with it, so I had to at least kind of like it, I guess. I don't know. Fucking... One of the the first of, of many fucking awful things to fall flat during Idol Week, and then um, we had our first our first event was the pizza challenge. We had to go out and collect all the pizza, uh, slices from where Prez did uh, pizza reviews, and whoever had the most cumulative points at the end would wind up with immunity from elimination for the day, which would have been fantastic. Uh, Could have really used that <laughs> on day one. But instead, again, we just wound up, we wound up uh, bickering and trying to figure out, we weren't quite sure what the rules of this thing were, and we spent more time arguing about how to go about this challenge than we did either completing the challenge or doing anything of any entertainment value. Um, so I started, like, trying, you know, there, there was really, we were not doing anything, so I just tried to start forcing some some content in there, and I think it just came off as, as really flat. You, you know when you're forcing jokes and it just comes off as, oh, you're trying too hard to be to be funny and entertaining, uh, ran into a bit of that. So, and when I say a bit, I mean a lot. Uh, and, like, head on and just fucking crashed. Um, what are you going to do, though? I, I don't know. Then we moved on to our next event was The Rundown, which is one of... Barstool's main segments is the end of each day. They run down the the stories from the day or whatever's whatever's going on. So we had to we had to pick some stories and and shoot a rundown. And there was just more more disagreement and lack of decisiveness there, which let you know it's the kind of thing. I actually I wonder if I would have been better. Just it would have been better if we could just do our own rundown, our own piece of uh, of content, uh, which obviously was what I'm used to doing. Used to doing here with the uh, the old morning live streams, but uh, yeah, twas not 
Twas not to be. We uh, just wound up again. Just f- the 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 jokes all came out forced and stuff. The the guys I was working with kind of wanted to do uh, a thing where we'd you know know in advance what everyone was. You're gonna say this angle. You're gonna say that angle. I I you know I'm generally I'm generally more of a hey here's the topic. Everyone prepare your piece and we'll we'll go through. But again, it was just more more indecisiveness and. And bickering amongst the uh, the group, not really, not really coming to a good conclusion on what the hell. Would, you know, I don't think. I think my entire team, along uh, just throughout the day, we did we had no fucking clue. It was just, it was just bad from the jump. The other teams, like seeing them on camera, look like they look like they were having a lot more fun and working together in a much more effective manner. So uh, we totally deserve to lose. And this isn't. I know I keep mentioning my team. I, my own performance was far, as far from stellar as you can get. I mean, just an, an absolute fucking train wreck. And but yeah, you gotta you gotta do the post mortem here, I've, which I've been doing mentally the past past couple days because obviously I wanted to. I I figured I could stick around till at least Wednesday if I could do some good uh, individual material. But um, you know, like I said, what happens is you 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 wind up grasping for those chances to to show yourself and you're trying to, you know, shout over uh, 16 other people or, you know, in the case of the team stuff, four other people. And it just comes off as as forced and really disingenuous. And I think that's probably more than getting. um, My computer's moving extremely slow lately, Uh, but it's more than getting eliminated early, what bothers me, because if only one person's going to win, more than getting eliminated early, what bothers me is um, is just the the fact that I felt like it came off as kind of a, a tool or a, a douche or a tryhard or insert your, your word for, for shit that I, you know, really never want myself to be associated with. But it fucking happens, man. What are you going to do? Uh, you know, one of those, the credit belongs. You want to say the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. But if the man who is actually in the arena does a dog shit job and he sucks, then he deserves no credit whatsoever. So I appreciate uh, all my friends who have been cool about reaching out and being like, hey, good job, man. Uh, it, you know, took a lot to get it, get up there and do it. I thank all of you. But when you perform the way uh, I perform... <laughs> On, on that stage, you don't give, you don't, you know, like, I'm, I'm trying to, to think of the, uh, the all time, like, gr- great stage, just pants shittings, and it's like, you know, Cam Newton in that Super Bowl a couple years ago, I know, uh, you say that the credit belongs to the guy who's out there and putting it all on the line, but, uh, eh, eh, eh. Uh, it's like it's like telling a drunk driver who uh, who gets who cuts a fucking minivan in in half on his way home from the bar. Well, you you tried, <laughs> yeah, you did, um, but no, no, what a fucking atrocious, a uh, just atrocious performance on uh, on my part. And I'm sure the guys on my team would say the same thing. By the way, we were all eliminated by the end of day two. <laughs> Even the guy that they were like, we there were three of us left uh, for final eliminations at the end of day one. They cut two of us, and they basically told one, like, you're sliding through because we've seen your work before, and we know what you're capable of, but, like, this is your final fucking warning. <laughs> so it was uh, it was bad, but I got to, I got to shake hands with... Um with Prez, uh, Francis, and KFC afterwards, and they're all fun. Fucking Pre- uh, Prez was killing me the entire day. Every time I would make just a, a atrocious, like, train wreck joke, he'd be like, you're on fucking thin ice, Marine. Like, I don't want to hear any more of those. I caught him in front of the camera. I was walking up the stairs. He's like, oh, here he is right now. Marine, you're fucking killing me with these bad jokes. <laughs> I was like, sorry, Prez. Sometimes, sometimes you swing and fucking miss. Um, I don't know, but uh, shout out to the comment section for absolutely murdering me after my rundown performance. I 100% deserved it. Uh, just absolutely, absolutely abysmal. As as I said, I must, uh, I must now commit the hari Um <laughs> My buddy Scotty did a fucking comment on Twitter. He's like, nothing to be ashamed of, bro. I was like, everything to be ashamed of. Uh, but that's that. So what's next for... Uh, for your boy uh, Mikey here and uh, the Savage Sack Tap, we got um, Hoboken Comedy Fest is coming up, so I'm gonna shoot them a message and hopefully try to get a, a press uh, 
press access to that. I would love to to sit down with some stand up comedians because you guys know how I love fucking comedy. Uh, what else? Exotica, uh, the porn convention they have in Edison every year. That's in November. I am gonna try to get uh, press press access to that. If not, I'll definitely uh, buy myself a ticket and go just go around taking pictures and and seeing what's uh, what's what, and trying to meet some porn stars and shit. And then uh, we got our our, ex, our Christmas and um, and Halloween uh, specials are coming up. Uh, Halloween, I'm going to link up with, with Uncle Tommy again. We'll do some stupid characters, and, and, you know, we'll have songs and poems and all that weirdo bullshit and fucking homoerotic trick-or-treating and all the, all the same shit we did last year, but with, uh, obviously, a 2018 twist. And we are closing in on the fucking holidays. You already see the bullshit. As soon as the back to school stuff comes down and this the mall doesn't even pay any attention to to uh to halloween and shit outside of spencer's gifts i don't think anyone at the mall knows what halloween is the the christmas stuff be going up uh probably fucking labor day morning so that's cool i'm gonna start working i already got ideas percolating for the uh for the christmas episode so uh that that will be a lot of fun and then i'm gonna try to get in touch if you're uh if you're a veteran out there listening to this um Put a put a pin in it. I'm gonna try to hit up some of you guys to. I just want to get. I would love to do for Veterans Day and the Marine Corps birthday an episode where vets just kind of weigh in on their experiences as veterans, what their service meant, you know, what um, some of the things they did on deployment, what what their uh, most kind of coherent memories are if they've been dealing with anything since they got got out. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll, I'll have more on that in the coming weeks, because like, like I said, for now, I just want to, I really wanted to get back on the horse, do an episode, because I, like I told the guys at Barstool, I do this shit for the love of the game, like, I fucking, nothing would bring me more joy than to just be doing radio every day, and, uh, it definitely hurts that, uh, that I blew, uh, blew a shot at doing, well, hopefully didn't, hopefully can stay on their radar and send them some, um, some stuff, but, uh, yeah, fuck, man. Uh, I will, you know, a, a couple minor highlights. Uh, I got to, uh, I, I got, I got to rile up John Taffer, and I got yelled at by John Taffer, which I think is is every little boy's dream growing up. And then, um, like, uh, like Trotta pointed out on Facebook, I did get to use, I did get to use the word, uh, the term three pronged singing cock and double vaginal, double anal in front of a nationwide audience. Yes, they were really, really shoehorned in in a pathetic fucking manner, but um, I still got to use them. So that's that. Moving on. Uh, last, I had a fucking great time the weekend going into uh, Idle Week. I was I was loose and and ready to go. I went down to uh, I went down to Long Beach Island as I uh, as I will be doing today and. Uh, if I was a douchebag on on Barstool Idol, you should have seen the douchebags on the line down to LBI. I took the bus for the first time, and I got high as fuck. Well, I, I got off work at four, and went dad uh, around the corner to uh, I got a bar in the West Village I go to called Peculiar Pub. They got a great beer list, so I was in there. Uh, chatting it up with the the bartenders, killing some time and drinking some very very high alcohol by volume brewskis. So I was feeling good by the time I got to the LBI bus line, and uh, I was I was ripping the uh, ripping the vape while I was hanging out. And um, holy shit! I mean, uh, talk about talk about fucking assholes all around. They were uh, many of them, many of them wearing the midtown vest, I would say was probably the most conservative of of outfits that I saw on this line. And if you don't know what the midtown vest is, there is this new thing now where I guess guys who work in finance wear a f it's like a fleece vest they wear over their uh, button-down shirts because they, I don't I don't know if they don't want to wear a tie or if it's just they can't I, I have no idea how they landed on this vest, <coughs> but it's become like a, uh, it's almost become like a status symbol that you work in finance is to wear this fucking, this vest everywhere, and they were, they were all, all over the place. Uh, it, it looks terrible, by the way. It is the worst fashion accessory ever, uh, although I've never thought that these preppy assholes know how to dress to begin with. I'm a fuck, I'm a t-shirt and jeans guy. Like, the fact that I wear chinos to work, it, or in general wear chinos now, is more a function of my massive ass and short legs that I can't find a fucking pair of jeans that fits. So I, you know, it's either wear, like, the baggy ass 1990s, uh, I, you know, 
these things are going to sag six inches jeans or just go with a, a nice fucking form-fitting pair of chinos so that you know that's been the thing for the past year or so just because i can't i can't find a fucking pair of jeans that fit right but i digress um i'm i'm a very casual casual dude so i'm usually just rocking out in a in a t-shirt and and whatever t-shirt and shorts t-shirt and fucking nice nice relaxing pair of pants but these guys these guys are some eccentric dressing motherfuckers um they they love the vest and then they're all they're all dressed like they're they're an extra from from like a beach party in uh in Wolf of Wall Street, like really, really doing it up, which I guess is what you do when you work in finance. But there was one, um, one asshole on on the line who was just berating the staff, and I'm like, what, what the fuck is going on? Like, what is this guy's fucking problem? He's on his way. He looked like he was in his forties. He's on his way to a leisure weekend on Long Beach Island. He's gonna be hanging on this like relaxing air conditioned bus, not a fucking care in the world. And he's screaming at the fucking staff about his place in line. Like, buddy, you're getting on the bus. It's like one of these people who gets angry about about getting on and off the airplane. We're all going to the same place. Like, it doesn't matter whether the and whether the plane lands or slams into a, into a mountain at thirty thousand feet or whatever the fuck. We're all arriving at our final destination at the exact same time. When you get on has zero impact on uh, on your ability to arrive on time or to to even get a seat. It's all, you know, everyone's this is it, just just absolutely absurd behavior out of uh, out of a grown man. Makes me, his his behavior makes my uh makes my behavior on idle uh <laughs> look acceptable if that's it. Um, ugh, yuck. <laughs> what a fucking week, man. Um, yeah, these are the same, uh, they're like the same idiots who use those, I don't know what, what the fucking trend is now, these, these water bottles that everyone's walking around with. By the way, I'm doing this entire podcast, but I got a fucking, a turd, like, burrowing out of my ass. I took a shit this morning. I drink this Cafe Bustello, which usually fucking flies right through me. And uh, I took a shit this morning, but only like half came out, so hoping for more. And if you hear the pitter patter of little paws in the background, that's uh, that is a very restless chicken running around on uh, my fake wood floors here. Chicky, what are you doing? And she is about to knock over the mic stand. What are you doing, chicken? Good girl. Um, yeah, I don't know what the fuck is up with these. Everyone's got the metal water bottle now. This is a thing I see around uh, all, all the corporate assholes at my uh, my place of business. Carry they they fill it up like five times a day. I don't know how dehydrated you're getting in an air conditioned office space, but these guys just I, I keep a glass at my desk. You know, I fill it up three four times. I have a couple glass of waters throughout the day. Keeps me relatively hydrated. I get to the gym, work out, and then I have you know a couple big glasses when I get home. I have one in the morning before I leave. I don't. I, do you really need to carry a... You can't regulate your hydration throughout the day without... I'm baffled by this. Like, these guys must be going through these bottles, like, four times in a day. And none of... It doesn't look like any of them are hitting the gym too frequently, either. So it's just all very, very, very confusing. Uh, but I had to throw that in there just because they were driving me. Every once in a while at work, I get into this mode where anyone just, like, walks into my fucking my little zone, and I want to fucking snap and fucking rip their heads off, and for a couple weeks there, I was, I was in that mode, I think just because I was wound about, um, going to Barstool, which may have driven my shitbag performance, I don't know, um, but yeah, like, I, I work right by the water coolers, they're, they're fucking there, and it makes a sound while it's filling up, because it's, the water, there's, it's ringing around, and the, inside the hollow metal, and it just drives, like, I can easily be driven insane, by just a little sound, and, uh, what a fucking, anyway, anyway, uh, I shouldn't be bitching about any, I should be nice to everybody after that abysmal fucking performance. Chick, get out of the closet. There you go, good girl, good girl, chicky. Um, anyway, what else? Yeah, I uh, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, otherwise, lovely weekend. I, I capped off the weekend on LBI with a nice ocean swim before we uh, before we headed up. I was taking a piss, and some lady bumps me with her... She's floating by on a raft, and, like, she bumps me, and she giggles, like, whoops, sorry. I'm like, yeah, I'm, you're... F- you you are floating in a sea of my urine. Like, she literally bumped me while a stream of urine was on its way out. And uh, she apologized and, like, had this, like, giggle. And, like, and then I saw her bump another guy. So I'm wondering if she was going around, like, using the ac- accidental bump. She didn't have a ring on her finger. I was – you you always glance at that when uh, – I always glance at that when an older woman interacts with me. Um just because one, obviously, I'm a big fan of the the milf porn, so that's that's where my head always goes immediately. And two, like, I guess, I, I guess again, it's just driven by my constant consumption of porn. Uh, my assumption is that it, people people are just trying to fuck twenty four seven because I watch. I, I when I tell you I watch way too much porn, I assume that at any time any two people interact it's going to lead to one of them tossing the other one's salad like it's just fucking fucking bad man but you know my girlfriend lives like a, an hour away so we can get to see each other that often and uh you know so i watch a lot of watch a lot of hardcore pornography and after a while it warps the fuck out of your brain so what are you going to do i'm a i'm a fucking disaster now um and i can feel I can feel that turd really beginning to bubble. So what I'm going to do is tell you that the rest of this episode is going to be... I'm going to have a quick tribute to the uh, the old home computer. And then I'm going to uh, briefly touch on this epidemic of dogs being left out in hot cars. And uh, then we're going to wrap it up because I do... I'm heading back down to, uh, to Long Beach Island for a couple more days of relaxation. Today. Took the whole week off from work because I figured maybe I would be uh, idle weeking until the very end. But that was not to be. So I'm going to remind you to follow me on social media. Facebook.com slash The Savage Crew. At Mike Montone on Twitter. Uh, at Gary underscore Moiler on Instagram. And uh, I will be right back after I take this dump. <laughs> and we are back. Um, oh, if I got got the rest of it out. So now I'm in good shape and I can record record the rest of this bad boy, then hop that bus to Long Beach Island, catch a, catch a few rays and lick lick my wounds after that bar stool <laughs> beat down. Oh, man, that, that is going to, uh, that one's going to sting for a while. But uh, anyway, I wanted to talk about, uh, well, two things. I don't know if I mentioned this before the joke. The uh, I wanted to do uh, a brief tribute to the old home computer. And then there's apparently an epidemic of dogs being left out in hot cars in my hometown of, which I'm, I'm so confused by, but one at a time. <laughs> so... This article comes out. Uh, I I didn't I didn't I don't think I saved it. It might be on my work computer, but um, there are all these. Uh, when you open up my uh, my web browser, it like prompts you with all these like clickbaity articles. And sometimes if I'm a little bored at work, I'll I'll actually read one of them. Uh, every once in a while, you stumble upon a good one. And I saw this one about the old home computer. And I guess the overarching point was, you used to have to, you know. It's, it was one computer in a centrally located part of the house, and you had to go to war. You know, everyone had their time to use it, whether it was the kids after school, mom and dad later, and you know, whatever. Uh, everyone ha- kind of had their block of time when the computer uh, was theirs. And the woman who wrote the article, her argument was that if that was the case now, if we could still be connected, but it wouldn't be this constant up your ass. 24/7 checking tweets. I mean, I'm I'm all I fucking live on Twitter. Even when I'm not tweet actively tweeting, I, I'm fucking scrolling through tweets. I love it. I love reading people's thoughts, seeing what's out there. Uh, also, I'm a the big fan of hardcore pornography, so you get a lot of that uh, that going through the news feed. Just a fantastic, fantastic uh, tool. But also with again, you know, the uh, the high potential for. Uh, misuse and abuse and of which uh, I'm I'm certainly guilty right I'm, and I'm always bitching about people walking around with their faces buried in their phones and stuff so I think to a degree probably would be great if we could if we could get back to less 
being connected a little bit less, which is weird. I know I'm a fucking podcaster telling people we should be off the computer. I, I understand the, the irony and perhaps hypocrisy, uh, laced into that, that statement. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think we would be better off, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about. I really wanted to just, I wanted to just take a trip down memory lane because I hadn't thought about the old home PC as it were in a while. I, th I think about the shenanigans and the experience I had that revolve around it all the time, but never in the context of, oh yeah, that was all on the home PC because we've been for so long now multiple device people. Like I have three. I have I have a, a smartphone, I have a, a tablet, I, I have a laptop, and then I have a fourth, I have a computer that I use at work that's just that that's there. So I have four four devices that I'm rotating through throughout the day. That shit is frying your brain at some point. Um I really think as as I mentioned before, I think the home PC laid the groundwork for that addiction because if you remember once you got on nobody wanted to give that fucking thing up like we had a we had to institute rules in in my house as to hey if it's a saturday and everyone's home you got like a 90 minute time limit or if you're watching you can watch tv or you can use the computer you can't do both so you can't be like i'm online and i'm watching that one or the other. I mean, it, things used to get fucking vicious over the, the home computer. You know, you'd lie about having to do a homework assignment so you could take the thing for the entire night, and then you'd just fuck around AIming with your friends. I mean, it was like, it was brutal. So you could see how it was going to lead to problems down, the, like, the idea back then that people would just have 24-7 access to the internet and not have to wait for that like dial-up shit or whatever the fuck that modem was was to go through. The idea that you could just walk around with that. I, I'm sure there were some people who were thinking about it. I didn't even grasp that. Because if you had told me when I was in, I was in about middle school when when these things started with the AIM and start, uh, shit started popping, if you had told me that I could access that 24... I, re I remember even having one in the back of a classroom or in the computer lab at school, and there was a limited amount, so not everyone could get on it. It was like a fucking knockdown, drag-out fight to get, to get a computer spot and use it. Um, you know, couldn't, couldn't fathom what was coming around the corner. But... <clears throat> I just wanted to, I figured, I you know, I didn't want to talk about anything too serious to give any fucking hot takes, not, none of that. Uh, I just figured it would be fun to to take a trip down down memory. What what life was like before our tech addiction, like in the, in the stone age of our tech addiction is what I would call it. Because really people did, we didn't realize it. I guess it's like if you're a cokehead and the, you know, those are just the early days of your cocaine use where you're just like, hey, this, this stuff's pretty good. What could go wrong? You know, I, I take a little snort and I, uh, I'm on top of the world. This, this can't be, no bad could possibly come from this. And then uh, here we are 15 years later. And we're uh, we're we're sucking some uh, some Russian guy's dick in an alleyway to find out what the results of our presidential election are going to be. <laughs> uh, I guess that is the uh, the path of the cocaine addiction of, of technology. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good uh, a good comparison or not. I'm kind of kind of just going on the fly here. I've I've some notes, but I got to do a, I got to do a guest show. I need to get another voice in here, and I don't know if I don't know if the pitter patter of chicken's feet are, are counting into the. Uh, cutting it as another guest in studio, but uh, the first thing I really used it for—I mean, aside from aside from homework, when you had to do—I remember you had to do a, a, a president's assignment, and there was this website called like WhiteHouse.com that was actually just a porn site, and everybody's family. They were like, the, well, I mean, where's the first place you're going to go if you got to do a project on the president is is to the White House's website. So everyone went to whitehouse.com and got smacked in the face with porn and then went to school the next day and like raised their hand to the teacher. Like, uh, yeah, we were trying to find information about the president and we got uh, I, it was a website about people having sex. Are there a lot of those on this thing? Like, nobody even knew what internet porn was. It was all very, very confusing. Like, the only thing that we really used the 
the primary the primary purpose of the computer back then was AIM. Like AIM was fucking king. Or if you were an A there were there were AOL families and AIM families. Always kind of a weird a weird uh, thing there where the the AOL was all packaged together and your your messenger lived inside of the AOL. But if you're an AIM family, you actually had to download AIM. And those motherfuckers had like six different screen names. You could if you had AIM instead of AOL, you could really fuck with people uh, because that's that's what it amounted to. I mean, AIM was for talking to chicks, and I say chicks with air quotes because you never really knew who you were talking to, because usually it would just be your friends trolling you. I mean, that was, if you wanted to kill a couple hours on a Wednesday night, you talk to your buddy on the phone, hey, yeah, all right, so we're going to, uh, we're going to make a screen name, call it fucking Hot Girl XOXO, and then just start messaging Dave, and then I'll make a screen name pretending to be Hot Girl XOXO's friend, and we'll start messenger, and, and every, it happened to everybody, like, it happened to me, happened to, uh, my fucking, but, like, we would all just do it, do it to each other, like, that was the way you killed a fucking weeknight in middle school, was by fucking with your friends, I, I actually distinctly remember, uh, one night, one of my buddies, uh, older sisters IM'd me to say hi, she was a senior and I was a freshman, and the entire conversation was just me being like, yeah, bullshit, who is this, Dave? I know it's I know it's my friends fucking with me. And then I saw her in the hallway the next day at school. She's like, "Hey, I I am you last night, shit. You fucking I wasn't lying. Like it was actually me." And I was like, "Oh, sorry. <laughs> color <laughs> color my face red." Uh, and then uh, we talked that. And I didn't do anything about it. Like I was not like I'm going to tell you that this story ends with me laying bone to a senior. But it was just funny because I remember being, you're a middle school student, so you're already on edge where the people are going to fuck with you and do something to you. And now it's got to go home with you. Like, these are the early days of cyberbullying, but we didn't realize we were cyberbullying each other and causing, like, psychological damage. We just thought it was fucking hilarious to watch your buddy try to spit game to some girl. They fucking got me with one once where I was, like, telling some chick, yeah, I got a real athletic body, but uh, I got a girlfriend who I really like, so uh, I guess we can't meet up. And then, like, the next day at school, they were like, ha ha, faggot, that was us. <laughs> what are you gonna do? It was a fun fucking shenanigans. You know, you gotta have, you gotta have thick skin with that kind of stuff. Um, we, um, one of our favorite things to do was to fuck around in chat rooms were really big back then. This was kind of like before, I don't know if they were the precursor to web forums or if it was the other way around, but you'd go into these chat rooms and what you would normally use them for uh, as a, 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 you know, adolescent boy was to do what was called trading picks. You got your hands on porn picks. This was before there were a lot of widespread porn sites. What you would do is you would trade them in the chat room. You'd be like, yo, I'll throw up five if someone else will throw up five or I'll cha I'll trade offline, whatever. Uh, and you would get, you would get porn picks from people and people would accumulate uh, a hard drive full of porn that way. Another thing that people would use these things for, I guess, would be like, would be like sex chats. And people would actually cy it would call it was called cybering, which I er I thought that cybering actually meant you had to like press your dick up against the computer. I don't know, I'm not sure how I knew that would work on the other end, but I thought for some reason that to cyber with someone you actually had to press your genitals against the computer. I realize now how stupid that sounds, but I initially thought that cybering meant I, I, pressed, I pressed my dick against the computer, she pressed her vagina against the computer, boom, we had cyber sex. I know. I don't, no ejaculation or anything involved, I was, you know, I was, I was still a year or two too young to really understand what ejaculating was, but... I, I, that's, I thought that that's what cyber sex was. I realize it makes me a complete fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but the other thing we would do is there were these chat rooms. Uh, so if you're a lesbian, you want to pick up chicks, it would be W for W. Um, if you're a dude, you want to pick up other dudes, it would be M for M, uh, men for men. So what we, what we would do is you go into a men for men chat and you you make a couple different names so you can leave different phone numbers. You would leave your buddy's phone number in like the middle of the night. You'd be like, hey, 
fucking call Dave at, uh, you know, 201-555-5555. And all of a sudden, Dave's getting all sorts of calls from guys who want fucking hot anal. And even better is that it was usually, this was before, some people had their own personal line, but most pe most people just had a phone in their room. So we would fucking... You, you, give the, you give the family line, like the house line, and it's like 11 o'clock at night, so, you know, your friend's mom is like in her pajamas ready to go to sleep. She got work the next day, and they're getting phone calls about, about getting a hot male on male ass fuck, and uh, it's all the result of the, the shenanigans of a bunch of fucking 12-year-old boys, and more hilarious, uh, it could not be. And that kind of led to, well, if we can get other people to call these what if we use this to look up phone numbers and to, to prank call people on our own and then record the uh, record the calls. So we would we would run uh, we would call we would make phone calls on speakerphone and then we would uh, we would run the recorder on the computer. We'd have like the little mic rigged up right by the phone and we would recall ourselves calling all these fucking places that's actually when when i tell you that gary underscore moiler is the the name to find me at on instagram gary moiler was our prank phone call name so we would call people up as gary moiler because we'd called gary was our friend's dad's name and after he smashed our friend's xbox into pieces in front of everybody we decided that gary was the perfect fucking first name for prank calls and then moiler i think came from we prank called a burger king and the guy was like a burger king moiler charlie speaking so we we're like okay we got gary and now we got this moiler guy so gary moiler uh then became our name and boy uh we fucked with everybody um we would we would prank call we would prank call our friend's dad from their other line inside the house until he figured out it was maybe like Mike Montone cut it the fuck out. <laughs> Sorry, Schlett. I fucking love the Schlett. Abs my absolute favorite fucking family, um, other than the Montones, has got to be the Schlett. Fucking salt of the earth, good people. Um, but uh, yeah, we would prank call. We'd prank call our fucking football coaches. Restaurants were our favorite. Uh, I called this place called K Pasta once, and this was. I don't. I don't know what these people are probably fucking miserable. They're working at a fucking a restaurant on a Saturday night, you know, and not a particularly good restaurant. It's the K Pasta restaurant. <laughs> restaurant, right? some shitty fucking pasta joint in uh, Saddlebrook, New Jersey. And I'm calling them, telling them that I loaded up on too much carbs and I got fat, so I had to watch Richard Simmons videos. And the Richard Simmons videos turned me gay. So now I was planning to sue the sue the restaurant over over the fact that their their product led to me being a homosexual and sucking on a bunch of cocks but i'm doing it with my my fucking sixth grade like cracked voice so it's like uh, yeah I, I i i ate at your restaurant and i had too much fettuccine alfredo and i got fat and i had to watch richard simmons videos to lose the weight and watching richard simmons turned me gay and now i suck a bunch of wiener and i'm suing because i wasn't gay before eating at k pasta it's some fucking shit and the guy's like so you're suing us because you had to watch Richard Simmons, and it turns you gay. I think you were gay already. I'm gonna fucking sue you if you call this restaurant one more time, you little fucking cocksucker. Uh, <laughs> the late 90s fucking ruled. You can't have fun like that anymore. You get in trouble for that kind of shit now. There'd be like an on online campaign to have your fucking have your fucking head cut off or have you banned from the internet or some fucking shit. Fucking fucking awful. And that end... It was really my foray into into hardcore pornography too. Prior to that, I had, you know, it, you'd have the magazine. I remember I had uh, I had like a penthouse, a Playboy, and a couple other things. I had like a fucking. There was this brochure that was just filled with one eight hundred numbers that you could call into, like you know those old jack off phone like hot. Huh? Hot girls are waiting to chat with cool guys. And I get, you know, it's just a jerk-off line. You fucking people jerk off the phone sex. <laughs> oh, fuck. We would, we, and we would call, we would call those two just to hear them. Because they'd always answer, they, they'd have the recording that answered the phone. and be like, hey, big boy, want me to suck that big meaty cock while I, f while I sit on my friend's face? And you'd be like, yeah, like, dial Dial one nine hundred hot sluts today. Um, 
and there was a like a whole brochure you could uh, they had like dirty fucking stories and stuff about chicks eating each other's pussies out and you could go home and go home and jerk off to it yeah you, know, you buy what well, you know it gets one gets mailed to your your friend's dad your friend's dad tries to throw it out before his wife sees it kid scoops it up out of the recycling sells it to his friends for 10 bucks uh, there was like a whole a whole commodities exchange going on with like porn and and burnt burnt CDs that you would use uh, Napster Napster to do but I remember my first real foray into online uh, pornography was this website called Asian Babe of the Month, and it would literally be a thumbnail gallery filled with uh, uh, a single hot Asian chick. And we would get so fucking pumped for the first of the month because it meant that there was a new Asian Babe of the Month coming out, and we could go look at f a fresh batch of Asian pussy pics. And it was a delight. And I mean, the idea now that... I, w I would only be able to see one nude chick of one specific ethnicity, and there would only be a new drop of, uh, of material once a, a month. It's just fucking mind-blowing, to be totally honest. Um, but yeah, memory lane, man. And I guess the, uh, the next iteration after that would have been the um, chicken. I'm going to have to ask you to stop licking the boom mic. Thank you. You know, Chicken, I love you, but you're a terrible fucking podcast producer. That's it. Just just look at me and stick your tongue out. I love you, Chicky. Uh, anyway, the next iteration of that, I guess, would have been the thumbnail sites, which were better because you could get like a million, you know, there were now there were categories and it was, you get a lot, you would get, instead of now, like where you watch a fuck scene unfolding, these would actually be, you would click through the different thumbnails and it would take you through the entire sexual act. So you'd have two fully clothed people and then they'd be making out and then they'd be sucking the cut and then it would get penetrated. And it was very, this was like, again, when I say this was laying the groundwork for a lot of the, uh, the addictions that we have today, this really did it. Like, because now you're like, okay, I can take in a high volume of different kinds of pornography uh, in a matter of minutes. Oh, and by the way, I'm 12 and my body is is reaching the like the heights of sexual arousal. I'm erect at the thought of every. I mean, this really when you look at guys these days who are having the erectile struggles that uh, a lot of a lot of men in the uh, the millennial age group have this is what laid the fucking seat you used to need a hell of an imagination to jerk one now it's like uh, imagine it what i mean if you don't if you don't have something awesome visual and if there's not like three things going into one hole these days people just don't want to fucking jerk to it it's it just doesn't it doesn't even move the meter um and then, and then what fucking, oh, there was this site, it's still around, it came about in the late 90s called Literotica, and it's all just a erotic literature, and I found out, I did it once at my buddy, uh, my buddy Dave, <laughs> he's my bull, he's like my best friend at Dave's house, I printed out some story, I think my plan was to like take it home with me and use it as jack-off fodder, but I wound up leaving it print it was like some lesbian three-way story i wound up leaving it like wedged in between some books on a bookshelf at his house i think his mom mom found it i was like dave what the hell is this <laughs> i'm sorry i'm a bad person <laughs> so i found it hilarious when dave dave's like what the fuck dude like did you leave this shit printed out in my fucking in my computer room, I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> so I, uh, well, obviously, I realized how fucking ridiculous that was. I went out and uh, I printed a bunch more. And, like, I would leave them, like, the school library, like, wedged in between, like, a couple of reference books. Like, you know, you bury them deep and who the fuck knows if anyone's going to fire. I don't know if anyone was going to go find them or what. They could still be sitting there in the Glen Rock High School library or maybe someone took them home to jerk off to and never returned them. All I know is that there have been a, a handful of erotic stories printed out and left between um, left between books at various places around Glen Rock High School and po possibly at a, another... 
another house or two at like you know a social gathering or so. Uh, <laughs> so out there somewhere, people have just been finding uh, videos about lesbians and fucking and lusty matures and trannies and all the other all the other fucked up stuff you can find over at Lit Erotica. But good times. That's actually a trick that we. Um, we carried uh, into early adulthood too. My brother and I would we had uh, we had like one of those sixty plus gilf magazines. I I think think someone sent it to me when I was in Iraq and I brought it home. But it was it's just all nude pics of like sixty year old fucking disgusting sixty and seventy year old women spreading their legs. This beat up anchovy vaginas sticking out so we would our game would be to place the open magazine next to next to someone's stuff whenever we're going somewhere so they would be the one in possession of the gilf mag and then one christmas we started ripping out the pictures and sticking them in between um in between our, our christmas card display our mom used to put uh, all the christmas cards up on the sliding door at the back of our of our kitchen that led out to the patio so for christmas eve we would insert the uh, like the 60 plus nude fucking <laughs> photos into uh into the christmas card display and wait for wait for like a, a relative to discover them and and just sit eavesdrop and await the shock that would come with um you know oh what a what a lovely uh, card from the uh, sakamaros here uh, and then the next the next thing they glimpse is just some big fucking octogenarian's bush <laughs> right at face level what what a d light uh, yeah and like a, there was also uh like uh like I said a burgeoning commodities market because there was still a lot of uh a lot of pornography in the day you had to get your hands on physically which meant someone needed a source for it uh and a lot of times that source might not have something like say a CD burner I had a CD burner on my computer my dad's a big music fan so what I would do is I download Napster I whatever the hot new songs were I would put them all on CDs, and I'd be like, all right, I'm placing this at a $10 cash value, but if you're selling that VHS of, you know, Backseat Driver or whatever the fuck it is, um, you know, the 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 all the all anal adventures of Amy from from Arkansas, you know, I'll go I'll go uh two two CDs for uh, a VHS and uh, a magazine. Or, or whatever. So it created a great a great way to get new porn. And then what happened was eventually porn wound up on Napster, and it kind of it kind of killed that that market because now everyone could get porn immediately. And what that brought with it was a shitload of viruses and pop ups to the home PC. And my father used some parents didn't use the home computer that much for work. Uh, because email was just kind of a beginning thing. My dad used it, the home PC a lot for work because he had to record himself and, and all sorts of other shit. Um, so in most most families, if you crash the home PC with uh, with a virus or, or, or pop-ups or something like that, it was of massive inconvenience, but it wasn't a professional problem. I used to crash that bitch with fucking porn pop-ups all the time. I can still re vividly remember uh, my one of my first great masturbatory memories it's a scene between i don't know if it's i don't know i'm gonna say it's janine linda muller but it not it's not brianna banks i'm gonna say janine linda muller but she's not she i wonder if she got the tattoos later um and jenna jameson and they have lesbian sex in the bathroom at this restaurant and it is to a 12 year old boy hot as fuck. i mean i still find the scene hot as fuck although i like I like my I like my stuff to be a little less blatantly porn. Like I like I like a little more lead up now. A little, g give me a little storyline. They kind of, you know, she drops a fork and starts eating her fucking box out, and then <laughs> and then the next thing you know, they're in the bathroom. Um, you know, that's a little a little over the. I know, you know, tease me a bit. Come on, guys. But um. Yes. Hello, chicken. Um, but that was probably my first, my first great beat off scene 
from that era. And actually, I might uh, I'm feeling a little frisky now. I might look that one up uh, after I after I wrap up this recording. But yeah, you would get you would download, and you could only get. I mean, if you got a a, a sixty seven clip. A 60 second clip you were in fucking heaven so you'd wind up downloading like part one part two part three and the next thing you know you have like a solid like 15 video pornographic uh, library on your computer but this is easily accessible to your parents you got to try to hide it and it's flooding the machine with viruses and pop-ups we did not know anything this is like in the days before condoms when the you know when when the gay community is just like we didn't know we didn't know that doing that would give us aids um that's that was the same way to be a 12 year old but like we didn't know we didn't know that doing that would give the computer an incurable virus so like every Every fucking boy who crashed their computer, uh, <laughs> who downloaded porn back in the day, would crash the shit out of their, uh, out of their computer. And it was like, it's like a widely known but never discussed thing that no matter where this computer was, be it the kitchen, the family room, the living room, um, someone's bedroom, it's a 12-year-old boy, the 12-year-old boy of the house was jerking off with great frequency in that communally used chair. Uh, and I, I think if we all reflect on it now, uh, what a high degree of discomfort that would cause for everybody to know that a, a, a family chair was being used by a, an, adolescent, a, an adolescent to pleasure himself on a regular basis. Uh... Your sister's going on to chat about who, who's driving us to the brownie meeting. To, we have Girl Scouts later. Got to sell those cookies. Who's taking, whose mom is taking us out around the neighborhood? And then an hour later, it's just some 12-year-old boy slapping his pud to two blondes with big tits going down on each other in, uh, in a restaurant bathroom. <laughs> what a delight. Um, yeah. Uh, that and uh, I'd get our AOL account shut down from time to time too because you'd go on and you'd start talking shit to strangers and they'd report you and it would get the entire family locked out of using AOL. It would be like it would basically be like if Alex Jones's entire family was deplatformed from Facebook and everything else, even though they themselves were not doing anything wrong. That's what would happen to uh, to everybody on on AOL. Uh, you know, I'd go. You know, you go on and you call somebody a faggot in the chat room they report you and AOL shuts you down and your dad tries to get on the next day and you're like I, I have no idea why why we can't get that's wow that's a real shock dad yeah I, I couldn't tell you uh yeah you you know what why don't you tell me why we're shut down because I can't think of anything and then he'd email like tech support and they'd be like oh yeah did uh did uh, Big Red 69 uh, apparently at 12.05 a.m. went into the uh, military men for men chat room, announced, you're all a bunch of faggots, and then signed off, uh, and someone reported him. So that's that's why. Uh, yeah, what a fucking... Good, good memories of growing up in Glenrock, where uh, people have just apparently, apparently gone off the motherfucking deep... And, um, I'm going to touch on this real quick because I got to, I got to get this bus down the shore, but apparently there has been an epidemic of dogs being left in hot cars in my hometown of Glenrock. And what they're doing is they're going, uh, they're going around shaming people by photographing the license plate and the dog and putting it on Facebook and telling everyone like I saw this woman and she left the dog alone for 30 seconds or she left for it or whatever the whatever it doesn't there is a no frame of time anymore that you can leave a dog or a child in a car unattended I don't care if it's the the most mild beautiful spring day and you leave the windows open and you're 10 feet away they are not to be in a car by themselves apparently we have decided that the stationary vehicle vehicle is the most dangerous place for anyone to be. Uh, not forget the fact that you're going to be taking these people out on like the turnpike or the parkway where people are killed on a daily basis. The hot car is the hot new threat in the uh, in the suburban streets. 
And I realize there have been some high-profile, horrible cases of kids and dogs dying in these cars, but I'm kind of like in the middle ground here where if it's, you know, if it's a 75-degree day and you leave the window cracked and, and there's, you know, the dog's going to be in there for 10 minutes, he's probably going to be fine. They can go in, run, a, run and get a cup of coffee. I think that's actually better than bringing your fucking dog into the coffee shop. Um, and not that I don't love the dogs, I'm a huge dog guy, I know people love little kids, I'm not quite as hot on them, uh, they're kind of a pain in the ass, dogs I can, dogs I can hang with to an extent, um, but I just, before I rap, I, I am driven, anytime I see these suburbanites going nuts about something, I'm driven by a deep-seated desire to troll the fuck out of them, I was thinking it would be so much fun to go around to veterinarians after they have to put a dog to sleep, you pick it up, you run over to the taxidermist office while the body's still warm, get that bitch stuffed, and literally bitch, to be a female, uh, get it stuffed, and place it in the back seat of a car, or like with its head kind of sticking out a window on a really hot day, you just go around the parking lot jiggling handles, you know there's always a few idiots who leave their cars unlocked, I'm, I'm guilty of it a few times, uh, jiggle a few handles, and then have the, the dog uh, st sticking its head out, and uh, and like, <sighs> panting and sweating, and <laughs> well I, I guess I guess the dead dog would, uh, maybe you could pump, pump a, little a little noise into there with like a bluetooth speaker, and just wait Wait for people to come by and freak the fuck out and start calling the cops and then just look at the dumb look on their faces when they finally bust into the car and realize it was a, a cadaver the entire time. <laughs> Maybe people don't find that as funny as I do. Maybe de I might be the only one who finds dead dog and dead child jokes hilarious. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe I should, maybe I should take my foot off the gas a little bit, pissed a lot, pissed a lot of people off earlier in the week, and, uh, I'm sure those same people would be none too happy with me making light of, of dead dogs and dead children in hot cars out in suburbia, but, uh, that's, that's it, I'm gonna wrap it up, like I said, I gotta get, I gotta get down the shore and just put this whole fucking week behind me, um, like I said, I will be coming out with, uh, some more, more fun, uh, hopefully quality content in the weeks and months to come, and hopefully, hopefully I get another crack at, uh, Barstool, I really did have, uh, I had a good time, uh, pretty much up until, up until running around on Monday, uh, and then even that I had a good time with, like I said, getting, uh, getting, getting ripped into by, by Prez, and, and getting, uh, getting ripped by John Taffer are gonna go down as fucking highlights, making just, just shitty bomb dad jokes, and, uh, and all that, it was a fun experience, and I know, I got, got killed in the comments section, what are you gonna fucking do, it's an internet comment section, they, they're not renowned for saying nice things about people, so, uh, that's that, um, bat, we're back on the horse, and, uh, I'll be back, uh, maybe do a couple live streams from down the shore, uh, tomorrow and Friday, we shall see, but facebook.com slash the savage crew, at Gary underscore Moiler on Instagram, at Mike Montone on Twitter, and, uh, have a good week and a good weekend, guys, it's the summer, I'm gonna finally take a couple weeks here to enjoy my summer, it's been, uh, I can, if I could tell you the fucking stresses that I've been going through, really through the first part of, well, now we're into the second half of the year, um, uh, I've had, I've had some super high highs, I've had some super low lows, um, so I'm just working on taking shit in stride and, and making the next the next moves in, uh, in the career and with this product and stuff here, so so be on the lookout, and uh, I, I thank all of you who, uh, who have been listening and, and supportive of, of me in this endeavor, we've, it seems like we've been, we've been crawling, but we've, uh, we've come such a fucking long way from from what I started this thing as, and uh, I I am I'm super disappointed that uh, that things didn't go better during Idol Week, but I I could not be more thrilled about the fact that I even got to be on that stage. It, that's what I told I told Prez uh, when I shook his hand after everything was over. I was like, thank you f so much for having me here. I honestly never thought I'd even be in this this fucking building, so, um, uh, with that, I am, uh, I am headed for, uh, for the ocean, and a few ice cold sodas, uh, I'm gonna play a little grab ass with a girlfriend, trim these pubes, and just have, have a, a nice relaxing time, uh, there will be podcasts coming out over the next couple weeks, keep an eye out for those, and, uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys around, have a good one, guys, thanks. <laughs>